Hey guys, I got a <clears throat> got a new toy to show off. Uh, we had one of these uh, at the YMCA. Uh, wasn't quite as nice as this setup. The pulleys were too small. The ropes were too small. Uh, we had uh, broomstick handles instead of rings to hold on to. But uh, I've got a pretty nice setup here. I've got a set of uh, cross set rings and some high quality pulleys, some 3 h inch uh, rope and uh, all the, the uh, ropes and pulleys are hung from cables which are attached to chains which are fixed to a branch on this big oak tree behind me and uh, I call this thing a fantasy machine some people call it a dream machine there's even a commercial product now called the ring thing that's out there um, but <clears throat> I had one of these back when I was in high school about 35 years ago now uh, and they're fabulous. They're a great uh, workout and allow you to do a lot of skills that um, a lot of strength type skills that you couldn't do uh, otherwise. Um, so it's, uh, it's a way for you to, to play and get stronger at the same time. I'm just going to go through uh, some basic skills and show you how the thing works. Here we go. Oh, by the way, first of all I need to show you the harness I've got here. Uh, you can use a spotting belt, but a spotting belt with some of the smaller kids that we've got uh, in our program tend to uh, uh, ride up into the armpit area and they make it rather difficult to do anything. So I've, I've got what I call a, uh, a climbing diaper on. It's a spotting belt basically that's got rings here on the sides, but there's also these stirrups that go up underneath your, your crotch and they're adjustable by the way. Made these so that they can be adjusted, uh, and uh, they allow you to work without sliding uh, down. So this is the harness I've got. This is rings. It's got some little clips here on the end. Put them into the rings here on the harness. When I pull down, the belt's pulled up. So it basically gives me half of my weight to work with. I'm going to start off with just some simple dips. I'm going to jump to a support and, and do some regular dips. With the ropes uh, behind me at this point, you'll see the ropes that are attached to the belt are behind me. You can do a dip down to your, your uh, armpits, back up. Or you can do what I call the deep dip, which is actually where you go well below the rings and back up. That's a little bit harder than a normal dip. You can also do the dips with the ring, the ropes in front, and it gives it a little different feeling. Okay. Now hop up, do the dip, and you can even do the deep dip here, but here you actually uh, almost go to a front lever. Pull back out. Front lever, put bent arms, and pull back out. So those are the dips and the deep dips. You can also do muscle ups. You can do muscle ups with the ropes of either in front of your, of your uh, shoulders or behind. I'm going to do them in front here. So you make sure you get your false grip first. False grip requires that you have the, the ring on your wrist. The wrist is flexed, the elbows are flexed. Straighten your arms out only to the degree that your wrist will still stay on top of the ring. Okay? And then from here, you do a chin up and continue to pull right through a dip to a support. Okay? So that's your muscle up. I like to do muscle downs as well, where you lower yourself and get that false grip. Okay? So that's uh, your muscle up. Now I'm going to work on. Uh, a kip to a support. This is a kip L and the ropes need to be in front when you begin this. So I'm going to start from this position and then uh, turn to an inverted hang and then fold and kip to a support. So here's your inverted hang. This is a rather awkward skill in this setup. Ah! Okay. <laughs> That was uh, not, not real well done, but it's a, a little bit awkward in that when you fold, your hips are uh, 
really fighting the rings. You don't go to the position you'd normally be in when you're hanging on the rings. So that's a little bit awkward. But it does give you a, a good uh, strength development opportunity in working on that. The next skill I'm going to work on is uh, the fells or the backward rolls of support. Uh, this can be done uh, with a false grip or uh, with a regular grip. I'm going to use the regular grip. Uh, this is very much like an undergrip pullover on a horizontal bar. And that's how I tell my gymnasts to, to think about it. Uh, you want to be able to look at the bar as you perform the skill. You don't want to do a skin the cat where your body goes between your hands. You want to go over your hands instead. So here's the error we want to avoid, which is the skin the cat hips get below the ranks, okay, and this is what you want to do instead, where you keep the rings in front of your hips and hopefully visible, and you pull to a support, okay, so that's your felch, uh, again the ropes need to be in front when working on that, you can't do it from this position, okay. Uh, the next skill I'm going to work on is the Felge handstand. Very similar to the skill I just did, but you just continue to push it up. Okay, so again, the ropes need to go in front. Okay, you use a false grip on this. Makes it a little bit easier. And you do the pull over and the push up. Keep the rings turned out like your own parallel bars. Extend the shoulders as much as possible. Okay. Here you can go ahead and begin to work on the handsome push-ups. Keep those rings out. Keep that body tight. And you can also actually go beyond the shoulder stand to that deep dip position again. And then go back up. Okay. So that's your handstand push-ups. Okay. Next skill I'm going to work on is uh, the hollow back press. The hollow back press is typically done from an L sit, uh, and you extend your body and bend your elbows as you rock your body forward. The elbow should not bend greater than 90 degrees. They should actually be bent about this angle. I'd say that's probably, uh, that's 90, so that's probably 135 degrees, something like that. That's about the ideal position. You want to be able to tip forward and keep your, uh, your body weight equally distributed on either side of your hands. Okay? So you don't want to go into this position when you do a hollow back. The elbows stay somewhat extended. So here's your hollow back. Again, normally we start from an L and then you extend. I just practice them from here with a straight body. Turn the rings out like you're getting ready to do an undergrip giant on high bar and you're casting to a handstand. You turn the rings out as you rotate the body forward. Keep that body nice and tight. Turn the hands outward like you're on parallel bars. And you can lower it back down doing the same action in reverse back to your support. So that's your hollow back press. Next skill is uh, a press to a planche. This is a straight, straight press to a legs closed planche position. Uh, this is very much like uh, a straight arm cast to uh, a handstand for an undergrip giant. Uh, it feels very much like a swing on parallel bars to me. Um, so again, you start in a support with a straight body, okay, and you can just kind of rock a little bit and then push backward and downward and take it up to the handstand. If you only go halfway, then that is the press to the plunge, okay, and that's this. Your head should be up, body should be extended, arms extended, rings are turned out. Okay, so that's your clunch. 
Uh, let's see. Enhancing push up, we're done. Uh, next heel is a, an inverted cross or a wide arm handstand on the rings. And you can get there in a number of ways. You could do the backward roll of the handstand or the hollow back press or the straight straight press. I'm going to do the straight straight press and then I'll lure that to a wide arm handstand or an inverted cross. Uh, so here we go. Here. Nice and tight body. Rock it up to the handstand. Then handstand balance. As you lower rings so that your shoulders are hand height. Pull that back to a support. The next skill we're going to do is the regular cross. The regular cross can be done with a false grip. It's much easier with a false grip or a regular grip. Of course, now on international levels, if you use a false grip, that skill is not going to be recognized. You have to use a regular grip on your cross. So, that's some of the basic stuff that you can do in your fantasy machine. Have fun with it.